Hello, Raw Stars. My name is Tiffany Roth, and welcome to this week's episode of Tiffany Talks. This show was created to help everyday people have extraordinary lives. And we talk about all different kinds of subjects in Tiffany Talks. So um, it ranges, you know, from food, fashion, relationships, travel. But today we're going to talk about a subject which I think that every single woman and man needs to pay attention to, and that's domestic violence. And usually people are suffering silently and not really knowing how to free themselves from a situation that is just so detrimental to your state of mind and to your well-being. So today I have a special guest on my show. Her name is Dr. Nikiva Jackson, and she is uh, someone near and dear to my heart. She is not only a rock star, um, she is a... Uh, uh, survivor and someone who has actually up leveled her life after domestic violence. She's a member of my Mindset Makeover team and she is the creator of the show Freedom Fridays here on YouTube. So I'm going to invite her to the show just to talk about her experience of number one, acknowledging okay, that she was in a situation that involved domestic violence and two, how to take actionable steps to get out and three, what happens after domestic violence. How do you keep from repeating the same pattern over and over again, even though that you know it's not good for you? So I'm going to invite her to the show right now. If you guys have any questions, you know, you can feel free to type them into the chat. This gets to be a conversation, right? Um, a conversation. Let me see if I can get her that. On to the show. This is a, let's see if I'm sending her a message and let's see. So I'm going to invite her now. Boom. And there we go. So she should be popping on. And you know what? I'll be inviting other guests to the show soon. So if you guys want to be on this show, make sure that you send me a message. Let me know a topic that you'd like to discuss because this, gets, this is a conversation, you guys. This is not just me talking at you. This is me talking with you. So I see uh, Dr. Nikita Jackson has now joined us on the show and she's ready. Let me add her in. I love technology, right? Ah, there she is. Welcome, welcome, Dr. Nakiba Jackson, who is also a raw star, and she is a member of my Mindset Makeover 1% Club, where she's learning how to make her life extraordinary by changing her mindset. So welcome to the show, Dr. Nakiba. Um, so a few words from you. <laughs> well, thank you, Tiffany, for inviting me to your show. And thank you for even encouraging me to even talk about my journey. Um, you know, it's been a, a tough time even thinking about wanting to talk about it, but then just having the platform to talk about it has allowed me to even be free in my life to be able to talk about it. So um, specifically for my journey, I dealt with it. Um, I was in a relationship and with that relationship, I had signs of, an experience that I didn't like. And what I did was instead of focusing on the. And we lost your volume for a minute. Can we hear you? Okay. Let's see. Um, did we lose the volume somehow? Uh -huh. Is that on my end? Did it shut you off or what happened? Can you try and say something? Okay, so Nikiba, what I'm going to do is I will, let's pop you out. Why don't you sign off and I'll invite you back in and see if we can get the volume going. Yes. Oh, here she is. She's coming back. All right. Let's see what's going to happen now. All right. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> All right. We got her twice. Let's get rid of that one. Yes. Okay. We're back. So you were saying that you were in a situation and um, you saw some signs, right? And then what? So when I saw the signs, instead of me staying close to listening to myself and just standing up and saying, I didn't like what I saw, I just started silencing myself and I started um, accepting things that I didn't like for myself. Like I started accepting the fact that someone was telling me what they wanted me to do. Someone was talking mean to me. And when I say talking mean, it's not like I don't like you. It was like 
serious stuff. Like I, um, I could hit you or I could hurt you or I can do certain things to you. Um, and some of the signs were even subtle in terms of having to explain every single detail of my life. Okay. Like, so let, let me stop you right there because I want to draw some attention to some things that you just said. Um, you know, words, you guys, sometimes we don't consider words to be abuse, but they are. You guys, and, and they're warning signs. Remember I always say that your words create your reality, your thoughts create your reality. So when you're listening to someone and they're speaking to you in such a way um, that you know is hurtful not only to your mind, to your body, but to your spirit, that's abuse. And what often happens in times like that is people just stuff it down. And you stuff down your emotions because you're thinking, oh, it's not that bad, or you, you're trying to take a stand for that person, or whatever it is. But it's it's abuse. And those first signs, and if someone's telling you that they're going to hurt you, believe them, right? And even if it comes to, because I remember, I know your story, this was someone who's been a lifelong friend of yours, right? A childhood friend. So it even comes from people that you trust, you guys. It happens with people that you trust the most. So go ahead. So, so like with those subtle signs that happened, some of them were subtle and some weren't so subtle. And I thought that, hey, I just had to be what they wanted me to be. And I stopped knowing who I was. I forgot, I, not stopped knowing, I literally forgot myself. Um, when I stopped using my voice, I started hearing someone else's voice. And then my work became an issue because I didn't think I was worth standing up for myself. I didn't think I was worth um, talking, talking to someone else about what was going on. And then in my mind, I thought I was being protective of that person as well. Wow. Um, wow. Stop. Please. This is here. It's just dropping so many gems here that I want to call attention to. So you were saying that you didn't think you were worth standing up for yourself. What does that look like? How say when you lose your voice and you forget who you are, like put somebody in the experience. What does that look like when this is happening to you and your voice just seems to be gone? So not thinking that I'm worth standing up for myself, it starts with with the thought process that, um, well, this person, they've always been there for me, or when I needed someone to talk to, this person was there, um, and no one else was there with me. So if this person is here for me and with me, then that's the only person that cares enough about me to think about me mm -hmm. and to include me in their life. Mm -hmm. So I should be lucky that they want me in their life. And so in order for me to keep them in their life, I have to make sure I'm adhering to what they want for themselves, what they want things to look like. And don't think about what I want. So that's, um, hopefully that that helps people to, to see kind of what it, walking through that process in, in your head. It's, you're, you're just, for me, I was literally thinking, I was holding that person higher than I was holding myself. Yes, yes, you guys. Oh my God, are you guys listening to this? <laughs> I'm so grateful that you're being so open and honest about this discussion because I'm sure a lot of people need to hear that. What you said is that you felt lucky to be in their lives. And when you're lucky, you made yourself small just to not make any waves, right? So that you could stay in that position because that person was there for you. But what happens is you put that person's needs, wants, health, emotional well-being before yours, right? And you guys, I'm just repeating what she says because sometimes... Um, you hear something once and it doesn't really land deep into your heart because you're in denial, right? There's a lot of people out there that may be in denial. So you're going to hear it from her. You're going to hear it from me. You might need to play this video again, but learn to see yourself, appreciate yourself and know that you're worthy. So what ne what's next, Nakiva? So um, it, 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 it started going through like a spiral where I wasn't hearing myself and then um, I replaced a lot of my thoughts and what my what I needed for myself with toxic behaviors. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize they were toxic behaviors. But um, one of the things for me, eating, I love to eat. And so um, it's nothing wrong with eating. But then sometimes you overindulge in ways that is not serving your best interest. And so for me, I started um, I started eating certain things that I shouldn't eat. And then I also stopped connecting with friends, family members. Um, things that I love to do, I stopped doing them because I was always making myself available to that person and for that person. Mm -hmm. um, even even in terms of money, like money that I was making or earning for myself, 
Um, I stopped doing things that I wanted to just so I can make things available for this person because I was afraid of what was going to happen if when they asked me for certain things, I didn't have it. And I didn't want that to be something that would, um, you know, thinking about it, I would get anxiety behind on what's on the other end of this person being angry and upset with me. I used to think that them being angry and upset with me was something that was going to make me lose them. Oh. And so I lost myself in the process. Wow. Um, how I started um, getting getting outside of it, you know, I have a daughter and um, some things that I didn't want patterns to be repeated in her life or my life. And I wanted to to be a different person. I wanted to be happier. I wanted to be able to live a life and live it freer. And it didn't happen overnight. When I started st speaking out about it, um, to other people and stop hiding about it. You know, um, someone in that situation is not always able to, to identify it. And sometimes the people that's closest to you are the ones that you shy away from the most. Because for me, I didn't want them involved. I was like, they're gonna tell me to leave and I don't want them to think that I'm this weak person. So I can do this on my own. Um, um, stop, stop, stop. This is so important. You've said a lot of things. So some of the warning signs you said were toxic behavior. So, so listen up, ladies, like if you are engaging in toxic behavior, usually it's escapism, right? What are you escaping in your life? What are you trying to stuff down, right? It's usually some version of yourself. And so whether that's eating or spending or drinking or actually isolating yourself from others. And then you said something really important, like you actually don't want to reach out to them because they might tell you to leave. And then, and then, and then you'd feel weak because you don't have the strength to leave yet. So we get to dive into that because a lot of people, you know, you might need to leave, but you're not sure. And so you're not ready to uh, have maybe someone else telling you what to do and sort of exacerbating that emotion of that feeling of helplessness. So, so how do, how do you overcome that where like you, you're thinking about leaving, but you don't want to talk to anybody and there may be some sort of. Uh, shame or guilt around that? How do you overcome that? So for me, um, when I saw that I didn't, so things that I love to do that I wasn't able to do and I didn't necessarily pinpoint, I'm like, I used to love to work out. I started getting all kind of pain in my body. Like my joints would start bothering me. Um, blood pressure, I never had blood pressure issues. Then all of a sudden my blood pressure was high. And it was just different things that was going and I resigned myself to that was who I was. And so when I started, um, just started speaking more out about like if I saw like a, a book or a topic on something that was related to what I was dealing with, I would look at it. And then I finally reached out to um, when I got really afraid that something was going to happen for to me. And I thought, well, hey, if something happens to me, what about my child? How is she going to live her life? And um, I felt like I found something greater than the situation that I was in that I could see myself getting out of it eventually. Mm. Um, it, it didn't happen overnight, but it happened over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And then I started someone, I reached out to someone who lived in my, in my neighborhood and they said, we can't help you this way, but they gave me a resource. And so when they gave me the resource, that's when I um, reached out and that's the, the Liberty House. I reached out and I started talking to counselors and they sent me on to another place where we were talking and they were just telling me, one thing that you tell yourself is you've got to get yourself a plan to remain safe. Like if you're afraid for your life, um, you have to get yourself a plan that's gonna help you be able to escape. Um, that's putting numbers in your phone, that's emergency in case of emergencies. Um, look at if something happens, how can you leave quickly? Who in your circle that you have that you can call and communicate with? And they said, make this plan and keep this plan in your forefront. And if you get afraid, you tell yourself this one thing, this person can kill you. Oh. And she said, if you want to live, you tell yourself this person can kill you no matter how it sounds. Oh. And um, those were some of the things that, um, that stayed true to me no matter what I was going through. I kept it in the back of my mind that this can go. Even times when I felt like, hey, it might not be this bad. And I kept reading things that a lot of times people of domestic violence, they leave, I think it's seven times before they finally leave. And um, one of the things that happened, everybody don't always get to leave and leave alive. And so for me, it was more important for me to 
to go more into what I wanted my future to look like as opposed to staying in something that I wasn't happy in. Like I had like a cloud over me. I felt like it was a cloud traveling with me. And then when I had to talk to my child and tell my child, hey, um, if something happens, I need you to press this number. And I'm like, this child is too young mm. to be protecting you. You have to protect her. Okay. And so no matter what happened, and I kept reminding myself of these things are things that are not going to go away until I take control of it for myself. And so when I actually accept my ownership and what was going on for me, and I actually got my plan. And even sometimes when I felt like, well, I don't have to leave, do I? And then I still saw the signs that were still seeping through. Those were the motivations for me to keep doing what I was doing because it was more important than just myself. Okay. I wanted to break some of the, the change that was going on. Let me just stop for a second. I have to go back and recap some of these beautiful uh, words of wisdom that you're sharing today. Um, one of the things that she said, and I want you guys to hear that she found something that when you don't feel worthy, right? Sometimes you just don't have the energy to do it for yourself. But she realized that her daughter, she loved her daughter enough to save her own life because who was going to be there to care for her daughter, right? So you guys get to dig deep sometimes and find something like the greater that give you the incentive and the, and the initiation to really make a change. And then she says, you know, my daughter shouldn't be saving me. I should be saving myself and saving her. That was really beautiful because I think in times like in trouble, they say sometimes we do, I love this song, I am a giant. Um, stand up on my shoulders, right? We have to be strong enough so people can stand on our shoulders, you guys. It just, just makes, breaks my heart. So, um, yeah, so that in order to be there for your daughter, you had to take actionable steps for yourself. The next thing, get a plan. With anything in life, you guys, anything that you want to achieve in life, you have to have a plan, right? And you said you program numbers in your phone. There are people that you could reach out to. You sought counseling, right? Because it is very true that sometimes it takes people seven times before they can finally leave. Because usually there's such a confusing emotional relationship that you have with this person, right? Of love and hate and fear. And it's so entangled that you can, you're not seeing clearly, right? And you said something really, really powerful. You said, well, should I leave? or maybe I can stay, right? Should I leave or maybe I can stay? And those signs are still there. So then you have to tell yourself that hard, cruel reality that nobody really wants to hear or believe, this person can kill you. This is a reality for a lot of people out there. So you get to take steps. So then walk us through, what did you do? So this wasn't a short process, it was a long process. So for myself, the short version, Say that again. Was it, did it take months or years or how long did it take for you? So this was within a year time period mm -hmm. um, that it happened. But one, one of the things I did was I stayed connected. I stayed connected to the counselor um, that I was speaking with. Um, I also stayed connected to my family. I, like at this point, like those were close to me, knew what was going on. And then um, I just start moving I guess you can say for lack of better words, according to my plan, even when things didn't seem like they were going to go, I was going to go through with it. I still knew what my plan was. Mm -hmm. Like I gave someone else a set of my keys just in case something ever happened for me. I said, Hey, if you ever get a call from me, here's a set of my keys. Just know I need you for something. Mm -hmm. um, I had, you know, cold words for people that I knew to say, Hey, if you get this call, this is what you can do. Um, and I just moved on my life as usual. I talked to, like on my job, we had a thing where we can talk to like a counselor as well. And so I wanted people at my job to know, like my supervisor, I wanted him to know what I was experiencing because it wasn't affecting my work, but it was affecting me as a person. And, and, and so I- your work. It affects everything. It affects your health. Another thing that you said, like people think it wasn't affecting your work. Oh, absolutely, right? So like you, yeah, just imagine who you are now compared to who you were then, right? When you're now that you're free from that. So you guys, it affects every single thing in your life. And that touches back on another thing that you said. 
Listen, emotional trauma gets manifested in physical pain, you guys. A lot of these aches and pains that you have are from your emotional trauma. You know, if it's pains in your knees or in your back, and also you were saying that we're manifesting even high blood pressure. It's from all the stress, right? So these are signs, like if you're getting sick and a lot of ailments, like this is, this is your body crying out for you for a change. Like if it, if it doesn't happen mentally, if it doesn't happen emotionally, it will happen physically, right? So yes, so by talking, now I have to want to say something because by talking to your boss, were you able to be honest? I mean, like how, what did you say? And what kind of words of advice can you give to people about sharing? Because I know that they, not everybody wants to just talk about that. And also not everybody wants to hear it, right? You don't know when people are in their little tr private closed doors, sometimes they don't want you to shed light on their situation. So what, what kind of advice would you give to people about speaking out? So for me, you go to someone that you really trust. And so for me, like my job is my livelihood. And so I knew if what I was doing or what was going on with me could have an impact on my job, I had to get ahead of that. And so that was a part of me making sure I, once I spoke it out that it was happening, I couldn't go back to say that it didn't happen. And so that was one of the reasons why I went to go talk to my boss. I didn't have to give him the specific details, but I let him know that I was dealing with a particular situation and that it was violence, you know, concerning with it. They asked me, where was I safe? And I told him I was getting the help that I needed. And I just said, you know, if there's a situation where something happens, I'm just wanting you to know what I'm dealing with. Mm. Um, for my family, you know, those that were close to me, I told them what was going on. Um, I even talked talk to my dad about some of it. And one of the things that my dad said, um, don't let someone think that you're scared of them. When you when someone thinks that you're scared of them, you're giving them power over you. And so that one of the things that he taught me was pretty much use your voice, don't back down. And then my daughter experienced some stuff that she saw. And one of the things she said in the middle of that experience was, don't go back and forth with this person because you're giving them power. Mm -hmm. She said, um, like the arguing that she might have solved, because I was thinking I was standing up for myself. And she said, no, you're giving them power. And she was very young when she said this. And so it was just things that I just picked up along the way that those different nuggets were a, a string of events that led to when the right time came. I walked away from that situation and, you know, in the beginning, I'm thinking, oh, it's personal change and we'll eventually be back where we were. And over a period of time, absence does not make the heart grow fonder. Absence help you feel so much free. <laughs> and it's, you see so much different opportunities that you open up the door for yourself. Like um, when you realize that you always had the wings and all you got to do is just fly. And it's like, once I started flying, I never wanted to stop flying. Yeah. It's just a freeing experience. Yes. Oh my God. That's so powerful because a lot of times when you're in the situation, it's like you're in the darkness and you can't see the light. And then once you finally step out, you go, whoa, okay, there's sun out here. Right. <laughs> and you start to experience new things, a new sense of freedom than what you believe before your belief system changes. Now, how many times did it take you to how many attempts did it take you to get away? Um, probably at least five, maybe six. Okay. Yes, over a period of several years. This was a several-year relationship. It wasn't just overnight. It took several years. And every time I left and came back, it always got worse. It never oh. got better. It got better for a little bit. But the thing is, when you're with someone and you're saying, oh, I want them to change for me, you never want someone to change for you. You should want someone to change for them. You should change for you. Mm -hmm. Let that person change for themselves. Because if they change for you, that's not really who they truly are. Mm -hmm. And that, that's one of the things that I had to learn. It was never about that person. It was always about me and what I accepted for myself. Mm -hmm. When I realized that I was better than allowing myself to be treated a way that I didn't deserve, I stepped out of it and I started getting it. And so now it's difficult for, for someone to think that they can talk to me or it, there are certain signs that I see now that I'm like, nope, that's a red flag. So I'm, I'm not going back there. I don't like how that feels. I don't like how that sounds. Yes. Wow. That's so powerful. Thank you for your honesty, like five or six times. So I have another question. So what did you tell yourself 
when you want it back. So it was embarrassment still. You know, I didn't want anyone else to see that I wasn't perfect. I wanted to cover that person. I wanted to for everybody else to, to think that everything was all good. I didn't want to admit that it was anything wrong. So I just told myself, you come back. You can take care of it. Nobody else will have to know. You can do it. You don't need anybody else. This is all you need. This is your decision. You got to live with it. Oh. So what was your decision? Like the marriage, the relationship, or what? Um, the marriage. Like in the, in the situation, it was it was the marriage. You know, I went from a relationship that had some parts that was good, but a lot, some of them weren't good. And so I went from a relationship that was away to a marriage that didn't improve the relationship. Mm -hmm. And so in that marriage, we had the relationship, but the relationship was not about building each other up. It was more so holding one person higher than the other one and not building a um just not building a foundation that would be long lasting. I didn't see past the what I was in at that moment. Mm -hmm. I only saw what I was in and I thought I couldn't get get anything different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Having low expectations of what was possible for you, right? Now as a leader, you know everything is possible 100% of the time, right? So um, I want to say um, a lot of times when you go back and you're thinking that that other person will change, the only person that you can change is yourself. And then you get to say enough is enough. You guys, if you're listening to this and you're suffering from some kind of emotional, uh, physical, or domestic abuse, know that you are worthy. Know that there is light on the other side. There is freedom on the other side. Take some actionable steps and get some help. Nikiba, what would you recommend some, for someone who's suffering right now who may be watching this? And, and what, what kind of words of advice would you give to them? So the first thing that I would tell someone, if you are suffering from any type of abuse, I just want to tell you, first thing, know that you are worth way more than that abuse, that you are a special person, that you're beautiful on the inside out, and that you deserve to, to you deserve more than that. And so you can, um, there's numbers, there's ways that you can call someone. There's always a 24 hour hotline of any of the domestic abuse numbers that's out there. And you don't have to say, I'm trying to leave, but you can actually just talk to someone to get your feelings out, to let you know that what you're feeling is truly valid. And so when you are able to talk to someone to say what's going on, that's how you know that whatever you're dealing with is, is, is something that you have to, to get, get beyond so you can move forward with it. Mm -hmm. um, the, the worst thing you can do is hide it and not talk to anyone. It's not saying you have to put this big bulletin board on and say, this is what I'm going through. But a lot of times we're suffering in silence. And so even you just have to get someone that you can talk to that's outside of your immediate family so they can talk to you and help you feel that it's more out there to it than that situation that you're in. So that would be the first piece of advice. Don't suffer and reach out um, to find someone to be able to give you some, just a voice for them to listen to. Because when I started talking to people about what was going on, it helped me realize that I was not, for lack of better words, I wasn't crazy, that I was really feeling the way that I felt and that it was a valid feeling and that the situation I was in was not about that person. It was about me taking care of myself. Wow. Wow. So, yeah, I, what I'm hearing you say is that when you talk about to someone else, it kind of like obliterates that feeling of being in denial of where you are, because as long as you hold it in, you're in some kind of a denial. Right. And you, what you're doing is you're denying yourself the right to be free, the right to have a voice, the right to be treated with love and respect. Right. And to protect your body. OK, so we have some people in the chat. But first of all, I'm going to put on uh, the Liberty House. Right. That is. Um, let me see. I think I have this. Oh, wait. Oh, I didn't put it up there. I'll have to add that in the chat because I forgot to put that one in there. But tell us about the Liberty House and their phone number of uh, that is an outreach person that an outreach, uh, an outreach uh, opportunity for people who want to get seek help. So the Liberty House, that was one of the, the places that I actually went to to seek help that was um, guided to them. And when I reached out to them, um, I went face to face, but they do have a number. Um, I'm seeing if I can pull it up without leaving, losing the screen. I know. I lose the screen too. Uh, I'll put Let it. Let me see. 
you know, if you can find the number, I'll put it in the chat. And then if you guys have any questions or comments, I, I commend all of you guys. We have Angie Kindness, yes, who is definitely been through the process. Yes, Pink Peony, you guys, I hold you high with love and support. Cheryl King as a survivor. Listen, you guys, there's so many people out there. You don't have to hide in shame. You get to talk about it. You're going to help somebody else believe that they can do it too. Going to help somebody else believe that they can do it too. So, um, Dr. Nakiba Jackson, where are you? There she is. She is. Back. I am here. So, the number that you can call if you do need to speak to someone, they're open 24 7, 365 days a week. The 800 number is 800 334 2836. And the local number is 229 439 7068. If my handwriting is correct. Where are they located? They are located in Albany, Georgia. Albany, Georgia. Okay. But and do they have these Liberty Houses in other places? There are Liberty Houses in other locations. Um the eight hundred number that you can call, they'll direct you to places where you are. They what it is, they have hotlines to help you to make sure that you're safe. Okay. And um, that's the first thing. For me, please. Eight hundred three three four. Two eight three six. Three three four two eight three six. So if you guys are listening to this and you need help, just use this as the diving board to go out there and get yourself some help, or at least make your first phone call towards freedom. You guys, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Nakiba Jackson, for being on the show. It's been amazing. You've touched my heart deeply. I love working with you. Plus, you guys, check her out on her YouTube channel, Freedom Fridays, right? That's the name of it. And she's journey. So since you have stepped out of the, the abusive relationship um, and stepped into your power, like you've been able to release a lot of that toxic behavior, a lot of that unwanted weight and step into your greatness. Nikiba, tell me who you are. What is your contract in life? How are you going to be in this world moving forward? Well, I am a confident, bold, inspiring, worthy leader. Yes, you are. And <laughs> the, person, the person that I am, I am the voice for the voiceless. I am hope for people that feel like they have no hope and that knowing that everything is possible 100% of the time. I'm just the person, I'm not just the person, I am the person that helps other people walk in their power and, and know and understand who they are. Yes. Um, I hold other people high and that's what I want everyone else to do for themselves as well. Yes, you are. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for this week's episode. Please, if this resonated with you or someone that you know, share this because, you know, there might be one word, one nugget, one little piece of inspiration that allows some person to free themselves from that uh, limiting and caging experience of domestic violence. You don't have to be in it just because you agreed to it. You can change your mind and create something new for yourself. You can change your mind and create a new life for yourself just like that. All right, you guys, I love you. Sign out. Have an amazing Thank day. You. All right. Thank you. Dr. Nakiva, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Okay.